<laughs> I, I know. Welcome into that. <laughs> See? Welcome into the live stream here from McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. I'm Neil McCready. That's Tyler Siski. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just, hey. Hey. I'm on a domestic terrorism list. That's what I'm on. <laughs> Woo. What a day. Hey, we're not first five minutes. There's 0% chance yeah. that gets flat out getting flagged. What a, what a, what a country. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, yeah. Welcome into the show. We're going to talk about some stuff today. There's. A lot of stuff going on. I turned on the Braves and Red Sox over here for Tyler. We got SEC women's basketball tournament in where are they in Charleston, South Carolina? Man, they're in my they're in my great city of Greenville, South Carolina. Oh, they're in Greenville. Yeah. That's the it used to be the Bilo Center. I don't know what it is now. I've that's not in, that's not far from Clemson, right? Uh but yeah, about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Eh, maybe a little further. Straight it's right down, 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 downtown. Love it. Yeah. I've I've shout passed. out to all my family in Greenville, South Carolina. How big is Greenville? Um, a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea size wise as far as population, but it's um, they got a lot of suburbs, Greer stuff like that. They got a lot of, a lot of. Uh, I mean, it's it's spread out. I can tell you that it's very. Let me tell you what it feels like. Very mobile, where it's very spread out. You know what I'm saying? Like it's uh -huh. it's takes a long time to get across, but not as many people as you would think. <laughs> What's the population? I mean, I know it's gotta be a couple hundred grand. Um I'm gonna say two forty five. What is the population? No, you're way off. Well, well, Greenville County's population is five hundred forty seven thousand. Yes, it's um that's Greenville's the largest city in the Greenville Anderson Metropolitan Statistical Area, had a population of that's not right. What does it say? Uh, they got the number wrong. Um Metro population is 928,195. Uh, it's a, a big area. It's a lot bigger than I thought. But no, that's cool. That's where, that's where me and the me and the missus got married. It's the 60th largest market in the U.S. No shit. That's what it says. How about that? My sister-in-law, she does the uh, morning show there on one of the networks. Okay. Good morning, South Carolina. That's an original name. Yeah. You know how they have that Good Morning America that follows yeah, one of those. Right, right. She's been on it's TV the, uh, for a long time. It's the largest metropolitan and combined statistical area in South Carolina. Columbia, Columbia is the second largest city. Charles, yeah. Charleston is the largest city, but the third largest metropolitan area. Now, Charleston is my favorite city in America. Is that right? Yeah. Love it. I've never been. We've always talked about going. Awesome. I've never been. Is it kind of New Orleans-ish? Eh, no, it's more... Ah, Mobile-ish? So Charleston, the downtown area can get a little New Orleans, like more true French Quarter New Orleans, uh, a little bit, and then you have the beaches and the and the little pockets, the islands, Seabrook, Kiowa, St. John's, Isle of Palms. You have all those. You have Charleston, and you have like beach communities up and down the coast. Gotcha. It's pretty cool. The Citadel College of Charleston. Mm -hmm. Yep. All there. Charleston Southern. Charleston Southern. Mm -hmm. So three universities. Pretty cool. Yep. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We got some fun stuff today. We got to bring up what you just sent me, by the way. Sometime in the middle of the show somewhere. We will find a spot. I got. We got to talk about that. That's funny. Yeah, because if that's right, I mean. <laughs> let's do that in life advice at the end. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to skip all kinds of stuff. We'll just do We're going to make it fit. We'll do two life advices. We'll do two life advices. <laughs> it might be what people are in the mood for. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a solo hand raise, guys, at 5 o'clock. You make it. I don't want to steal your material. Maybe you could do the entire show on that article. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked for, hey, wh what do you guys want to talk about? And like two thirds of the questions are are political. Oh uh, boy, State of the Union. We're not there yet. Do you watch the State of the hey, Union? Why? <laughs> what What does me watching the state? How does that benefit my day? You're not curious. Not even for, for what? The guy that's up there talking. It is it's not. This is not a Joe Biden shot. The guy up there talking, whether it's Biden, Trump, or hell, they don't know what the hell is going on either. So what, what am I going to listen to somebody get up there and jabber for 45 minutes? What I do enjoy is that, again, to show you how utterly divided we are <laughs> as a country and how completely biased we are as a media, when that speech is over, whether it was a one or a 10, okay, on one network, it's going to be the worst thing that ever happened. That's and on the, the greatest speech ever heard. That thing sucks. And on the other, yeah, on the other, it's going to be, did George Washington come back to life? I mean, this was incredible. What an oration. 
there's no doubt about it. No, no matter what, no one's gonna go. Ah, it was like every other state of the union. I did watch whenever there was a state of the union around COVID, and um, Donald Trump was still doing his state of the unions when he was president. I enjoyed watching like uh, the facial expressions of Nancy Pelosi. Like that's what I I didn't I <laughs> yeah. didn't hear a word yeah. that he was saying. Yeah. I just was focused on Nancy Pelosi. Like the way she re- her she <laughs> face was like. No, the whole time that was that was entertaining. I have seen people do state of the union drinking games, and I mean you you <laughs> you'd be. Lit. I would I would literally <laughs> rather watch. I would rather watch uh, a season's worth of WNBA before I watch oh, the wow. state of the union. Wow, that's All right. where I'm at. Here we go. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Welcome into episode number one fifty eight of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. I'm Neil McCready. That is Tyler Siski here on this Thursday afternoon. It's May the seventh. Hope everyone. It is March the seventh. What did I say? May. It's March. <laughs> March seventh. It's not May the seventh. Damn, you're a time traveler too. Hey, you never know. Put that in his profile. <laughs> March the 7th, brought to you by Rain Total Body Fuel, 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits and achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram (laughs) at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. I'm sorry. I haven't had much sleep. I'm I'm, I'm in one of those moods. Neil, I'm rocking the uh, peach nectarine today. And for for a fantastic th- Thursday, this May, May the seventh. I mean March the seventh, yeah. the Thursday. I'm gonna need a little extra juice. Got to go to South Panola tonight to watch the Chargers play a little baseball. I had a big dub last night over Northwest Rankin. Northwest Rankin, good good baseball team, man. Holy smokes, they had a kid that was shoving it. Um, North, and- North, Northwest Rankin and Madison Central both. If you make me bet on most any sport, <laughs> say good or bad, I'll just go. They're good. Dude, this kid was uh, – <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that Oxford won the game. Oxford's uh, pitcher threw great, had a – had a, I mean, threw, and then had two two pitchers come in do really well. Um, but this this other kid, man, he had some stuff. I can guarantee this. I don't know what level it will be on. He will be playing somewhere in college. Uh, he was – he wasn't a thrower. He was a pitcher. He had some good stuff. And uh, Oxford small balled him. Got a, got a, yeah. got a squeeze. They ended up taking him out with two outs, I think, and the two outs in the seventh inning. They took their guy out, and then the other guy get we got a uh, like a bloop, got a double. Don't see a lot that, and that kind of baseball hit. anymore. No, it was a, it was it was like an old school baseball game, so it was yeah. good. Neil, but I'm rocking with the peach nectarine. Uh, I sent our boy Bob a text today. He's he's been his new gigs got him busy. Uh, I think he was doing some 2025 pricing stuff today. Big meeting for Bob today. So Bob, appreciate you, dog. You're out there. And then, uh, well, the Cooper Chevrolet chat I see is already bumping. I got some highlights in there. I need to go read. But in Cooper Chevrolet, Neil, it's truck season. You Mm -hmm. can get incredibly low 0.9 APR financing on the new Chevy Silverado 1500. Go to cooperchevrolet.com or call 256-236-4481 to get qualified and schedule your test drive today. And do not forget to tell them that McCready and Siski sent you. All right. All right. Now you ready to roll? I'm gonna skip sure. all over I'm gonna skip all over the place today. We're just gonna have fun. All right. So I'm sure you talked about this. I haven't had a chance to listen. Yes, um, we did. We talked. I'm sure you talked about this today. I couldn't help it. I gotta bring it up. So it started. I, I didn't wasn't really even gonna talk about it. And then last night at the baseball game, um, there was somebody in the press box and they had the windows open. And I think they were unaware that everybody in the stadium could hear their conversation and they were having a good conversation about this. And I was, it made me laugh. So, um, Zach Arnett is coming uh, to Ole Miss as an analyst, I guess, uh, yesterday Lane had a press conference. That was funny. Um, I watched, I did watch that on your, (laughs) on your YouTube channel. It made me laugh. Um, but, uh, first of all, happy for Zach. I I respect Zach so much. I think he's one of, I've, I've said it from the day one we've had on the show. I've coached against him. Um, I don't care what your fandom is. He's a hell of a football coach. I, I think the uh, I think his, he never really got a fair shot at being the head coach, but that, to each their own. That's why you get paid the money, and they have to pay the buyout. So that's yep. that's part of the business. That's why um, he's volunteering at all. Yeah, that's why he's he's chilling as an analyst. 
Um, but the funny part to me in this conversation that I was, I, I wasn't trying to overhear it. They were literally, it felt like they were screaming in my ear. Um, but it's hilarious to me how the opinion of a coach changes based on where he coaches. What polo he's wearing. <laughs> what polo he's wearing. Yes. You know, you could have asked any Ole Miss fan about six months ago what they thought about Zach Arnett. They'd be like, man, that guy sucks, man. He's terrible. And then today it's like, man, he's not so bad, man. He's the hell of a coach. <laughs> he's going to help us on defense. <laughs> so I just, I was just crying. I just thought it was hilarious as they were, they were doing that. But that's probably the, the best part of it. But um, also, William Vallejos. Yeah, it's coming. Going to be an analyst. William was with us at Alabama. He played at Alabama. He's an O line guy. He's been at Colorado. He's been all over the place. Uh, one of my all time favorites. He is. He is Mister O line coach. He's very um, was a. I mean, self admitted, he was an overachiever in college, but he was a starter uh, at Alabama. Tough as nails, smart as hell. Um, he's one of the probably. He doesn't get his due, but I, I would consider him one of the top five centers to ever play ever at the University of Alabama. Oh. He's, 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 he was legit. He's just, uh, he's undersized, but tough as shit. But I'm glad that, I'm glad that he's here. I texted him. Congratulations. Talked to him a little bit last night. But, um, all right. It's <clears throat> all about that. I'm going to try to breeze through this, Neil, because you know we got to get to some fun stuff. Okay. Um, all right. I wanted, I wanted to say this. And I know, uh, this will be one of those things that Cole likes to clip and put on TikTok. Um, I want to give out a warning to oh. all, NCAA student athletes, football players specifically, okay. that are deciding to opt out of this NCAA football. And you know who you are. Some of them are more public than others. Okay. It's like 85% have opted in. Eight, it was 87 the other day. I haven't okay. seen an updated number. 87% okay. on Monday. It's probably closer to 90 now. Imagine. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's, let's say 90%. Okay. Um, the people that are advising you are not very smart. Because let me explain something to you. I have an eight-year-old at home, okay? I have an eight-year-old mm -hmm. who was basically, I literally can now pick any great Michael Jordan, Larry Bird. I can pick Clyde the Glide, Drexler, whoever. Mm -hmm. Do you know how he knows exactly who they are and he can tell me all about them? Because he plays NBA 2K. Because he plays NBA 2K. Yep. This is a failure on your – this is not – this is a very short-sighted – mentality that you have here this is going to increase your branding nobody is going to give a shit if you're not on the video game but if you are on the video game they're going to know who you are so whoever is advising you to hold out or for more money or for whatever you want to say your reasons are for not going in the game focusing on football focusing on football i saw that when you did too <laughs> i mean now, I like to see. I would like to see that one specifically be said that I saw it. That wasn't like quoted, but I, I want to see that. Uh, but I mean, whoever's giving them advice, that's terrible advice because your branding, like you're in college, guys. Let's think here. And some of you guys are red shirt freshmen. So when you go in the pros, these eight, nine, 10, 11 year olds, guess what? They're going to grow up and start spending money. You're killing. You have a free opportunity to brand yourself to the whole world in your, and for what? Why, well, I want to know why. Why are you not participating? That's stupid. Yeah, I can't really. I'm, I'm in the minority on this. That I've seen a lot of people with, get really worked up about it with Arch Manning in particular. And I'm like, hey, look, Arch Manning has the right to opt out. I mean, if he wants to opt out, opt out. I don't know what justification you would have for opting out. It's a free 600 bucks, literally to do nothing. And you're going to buy the damn game anyway. And they're going to give you the game. And they're going to give you the game. But if it's because, well, your grade's not going to be high enough, I mean, like, who cares? Like, who, who really cares? To your point, though, I mean, you're right. I remember uh, Carson when he got into, what's the, what's the baseball game called? MLB The Show? Yeah. All of a sudden, he's like remembering names of guys that played years ago. You know, yeah. You're, it, I can't again. My you, seventeen year old plays games. You know, he he's playing an F one manager game. I guess he plays it on um, uh, Xbox, and he's wanting to wanting to go. He's now he's watching the Netflix show, and now he's wanting to go to F one events. Why? Because of the branding of a video game. Yeah. Okay. You gotta. I mean, 
you got to have some freaking people around you that have common sense. This is stupid. This is, this is literally bad, bad, bad advice. It's terrible. Pisses me off. Yeah. I, 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 I know this is not great podcast. I just don't have a hot take on it. I don't, I don't really have an opinion on it. If, if it were my son, I would advise him just to take the money and get the game and opt in and be fun, something to have down the road. But I don't, I don't get worked up about those that I, if Arch Manning wants to opt out of a video game, he can opt out. Yeah. That's his right. All right. Um, I'm sure you saw this. I don't know if y'all talked about this this morning or not. One thing I've learned over the last few weeks is that compared to most males, I play a lot less video games than they do. Well, yeah, but you're, but you also, in, in fairness though, you kind of missed, I was in the, at the middle end of it. You, yeah. mi- you missed the, like, cause what are your, how old are you? 50? 54. So eight. So, you know, when I would, I mean, we had, when I was a kid, we had Atari and then in, Nintendo and like in television and all of that stuff. But it, when the it, it, Sega it, PlayStation boom happened, you were probably, I was gone. Of, yeah. And that's kind of when, yeah. like, I mean, I played Nintendo and stuff, but the boom kind of happened that PlayStation boom. All right. Well, the graphics, my graphics increased and went, got away from the old 8 bit, 16 bit, whatever it was called. All right. Um, Nick Saban had the comments to Chris Lowe. Um, that was interesting. It was a very interesting story. Well done by Chris. Well done. Kind of did a, a TikTok of how it all went down. Um, gave, gave you some inside, little inside stuff. There were some nuggets that were interesting, nuggets that created debate. Yeah, I love that. I'm always fascinated by why are we debating something that didn't happen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't know, right? I mean, why why are we so again? Can I say did, why are we was... so worked up over something that didn't happen that was just and the way that Chris wrote it, he didn't write that it would have happened. He just was saying Chris wrote that Florida State at one point for a few hours believed that Mike Norvell was leaving Florida State for Alabama. Yeah. Okay. And he said Which is true, by the way. He said that Florida State was had a two prong attack, basically. What can we do to keep him? And if he leaves, we've got to pivot quickly. Who would we pivot? Who would we target? Yeah. Chris reported, and I trust Chris on this. Yes. I know who Chris is dialed into. <laughs> hey, who was Chris's source on this, Lane? I mean, uh, no. Neil. <laughs> what, well, it wasn't Lane. But I can look, Chris is really tight with I know, I'm just teasing. He's tight with Saban. He is. He's tight with um, Lane. He's tight with Lane. He's tight with Sarkeesian. Yeah, he's tight with everybody. He's, he's a good dude. Who represents those people? <laughs> so he, 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 he knew how things work. So, But he never reported that Lane would take the job or that Lane wouldn't take the job. He just said that Florida State was going to target Lane Kiffin. That is Okay. Did we not say that on the show or was that something we just didn't talk about? I can't about? remember. I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know you and I talked about it. <laughs> I can't remember if we talked about it. I know that about. during those moments I was watching. Well, there was a moment where I, be- I believed. And I'm not talking about the Lane thing. I'm talking about the no, Norvell no, no. thing. There was a moment where I believed that Norvell was going to Alabama. Yes. And I remember thinking to myself based on conversations that, well, this could get interesting. I want to say it was something like in the morning we thought like Norvell was going, and then by the afternoon it was already over to DeBoer, and that's where he yeah. ended. And I was of the opinion that if – something happened that involved here there really wouldn't be a search here there would just be a promotion promotion all right but here here was the thing some interesting stuff out out of it and 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 i want to give kind of people a little background here um you know he mentioned the way that the players reacted after the loss um about handling it with class the loss to michigan the loss to michigan and rose bowl yeah uh, about handling class and then that probably pissed him off and then when he went on vacation, he comes back and he started doing his player exit meetings or whatever. I know this pissed him off because yeah. he he mentioned it, and I know him, and I know ex- I know how the, what happens in those meetings. And he mentioned that seventy to eighty percent of those meetings were based on two things: one, can you give me assurances that I'm going to play, and Nick's never going to do that because if I'm not, I need to get in the portal. Not, I need to get in the portal, right? And B, how much money am I going to make? So that was not the way those meetings have ever gone. And that's not the way he, and that probably, and it pissed him off. And I want to clarify a criticism that I've heard of Saban on this. I've seen some people do some hot takes. Saban had a clause in his contract, for example, that guaranteed that he would be the highest paid coach or one of the top three or whatever it was. Saban has reiterated a thousand times that he's for the players getting compensated. A hundred percent. 
What he was trying to say in this quote, and I, I got it completely. Some of the people are just obtuse, man. They, they, they cannot, they I'll cannot understand it. What he was saying was when your salary becomes the only thing, when what you make, forget the NIL, I'm so sick of that. When your salary becomes the only reason you're showing up for work, you're not going to be the kind of worker that he's looking for. You're not going to do for the program what he wants the program to be. They won there for a long time. They won at LSU. They won it at, uh, at Alabama a certain way. Yep. It was you buy into the program. You buy into the process. The process produces results that, A, make you a better player, B, make you more marketable to the, to the NFL, but you sacrifice for the common good. Okay? It's one of the reasons, if you listen to Lane Kiffin talk about last year's Ole Miss team, he will say over and over and over that it was a neat team. He doesn't mean that they were keeping things tidy. He means that guys <laughs> sacrificed for the common good. Yes. And, that you, and that you don't always get teams that do that. No. It's why Lane Kiffin spent most of his press conference yesterday talking about culture, right? So that's what Saban was saying. People that are like, oh, so he's bitching that the players are getting paid. No, that's not what he's saying. But he's saying that when it becomes the only thing or the most important thing, he doesn't think that the way that he ran a program might work any longer. One thing he, and this is what I wanted to talk about, is, and this is why I do, I mean, he, he admitted it had something to do with it, but it wasn't everything, but. In that program, the, the type of kid that you're looking for and the type of player that you're looking for, look, there's one football mill. There's one football, and there's a lot of players there. Yeah. And so the type of player that we had to go get, it, Alabama at that particular time wasn't for everybody. Okay? It yeah. wasn't – didn't mean you could be the number one player in the country. Some of those guys didn't fit, and this is why. Is when you were looking and you're digging into the intangibles of the players, like to put on that roster – you had to find people, and he, and he preaches on this. You cannot be motiva motivated by external factors, okay? You have to be internally motivated, Yeah. okay? So money is an external factor, okay? My playing time is, exter is an external factor. What somebody says about you on social media is an external factor. Kobe if Bryant didn't play. For Kobe Bryant made a lot of money, and he loved the money, but that's not why he played. And so the process. That's not what drove him. Right. And so that's what people don't understand about the process because people hear process and think it's a step-by-step -step thing. Sure. But the whole point of the process is you have to be internally motivated, okay, to do your job to help the team in the best of your ability. And then the actual payoff will come, the value will come at the end. Um, and look at him. And he was in the, like in the contract. He was the highest paid, always going to be the highest paid coach in college football. There's not a college football coach in America that works harder than he does. He doesn't just do it and go home and, and go to the beach and hang out and play golf all day. This guy worked harder than anybody that's ever lived. I mean, he was a machine. He, 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 you know, he walked the walk. He, you know, whatever he said he was doing, he was doing. And so I think that had something to do with it. And then, but here's why. And, and he gets it, and that's probably why he retired. But <clears throat> you don't, players have changed, okay, and they've changed quickly. And it's turned into people say, oh, it's the NFL. Well, this part, you're right on. When you start getting paid money and it's about playing, all of a sudden everything is about me, 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 and less about team, 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 team. And his entire system, the entire program was built around team. Like you look at the great, like, <clears throat> you know, Amari Cooper, one of the most unselfish human beings, wide receivers that's ever lived. You look at the players. I mean, we had a running back room at one time that, that consisted of T.J. Yeldon, Kenyon Drake, Derrick Henry, uh, Alvin Kamara, Damian Harris, Bo Scarborough. I mean, all these guys running through the doors at the same time. Like, there's only one football. And so getting those kind of people that, are ex not, that aren't motivated by external factors, that was kind of the key, the key to the success. And now it's just at that level to get the player – at that level, to compete at that level, those just don't exist much anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the, at that level. Now, you can go find guys maybe at a group of five level or lower level. You can find a guy like that. But guys that are getting told how good they are for a long period of time, they, they don't build them like that anymore. MPW Digital is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run, take a nap, read a book? A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. 
The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Therapy can be helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the very best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com MPW today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash M-P-W. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I drink AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, sustained energy, immune system support, and I hate taking those big supplement pills. I drink AG1 every morning, love knowing I'm doing something good for my body, giving my body the nutrition it craves, covering my nutritional bases. Covering my nutritional bases for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water, drink it first thing each morning, done. also like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash mpw. That's athleticgreens.com slash mpw. Um, is it uh, De Niro Good, I guess is what it is, uh, in the Cooper Chevrolet chat said, would you hesitate coaching if the start of your career was in these times? If I knew what I know now, yes, but maybe ignorance is bliss and you don't know any different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, the hard part for me is it's very difficult to hold, hold people accountable now. Like if you, if you look, you're getting 18 to 22 year old young men that are in this transition from being a child to a grown man. Um, a lot of times they, you are the first and only male figure in their life that will put your thumb on their ass and make sure they're doing the right things, not just on the field, but off the field. And now we've we've created an environment, and look, well, they, I can, they to, can leave multiple times. I listen to Lane's press conference, right? Yeah. Part of the reason Lane's pissed is because Lane basically built a roster of transfer portal guys, mm-hmm. and then guess what? They couldn't go nowhere, and so he could kind of do what he could build his culture and do his thing and develop, you know, whatever he wanted sure, to, of course, because they couldn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. But now they can. So you get in this situation to where. You have to be their friend, and but the, the coach is not a is it's not the player's friend. You're a mentor. You're you're not you're more of a father figure person than you are a friend person. Like it's and when you have to be friendly all the time, well, they're not you're not going to be able to hold the kids accountable. Sure. And I'm not talking about, and guys, I'm not talking about jumping off sides and running the right route. No, no, no. I'm talking about being productive human beings on the planet, holding them accountable when things happen off the field, holding yeah. them accountable for not going to class, holding. Being able to coach a guy hard and be able to tell a guy, hey, we still we we like your future here. You're not quite ready. You're not ready to play, but we like what's happening. And if you'll keep working, a lot of times those kids hear that and what they hear now is for just a minute. Here's the deal. It's not even that they're bad kids or that they're soft. I hear that one a lot. They're soft. They're lazy. The soft one bothers me. Here's why. Because even back in the day, right? When a kid got demoted, he typically took a day or two and felt sorry for himself. Now, at some point, he rallied, and he went back to work. Yep. But at first, he felt sorry for himself. It's fair? Yeah. Okay. 100%. He didn't have an option then. Now, in that 48 hours that he's feeling sorry for himself, a coach jumped his ass at practice. A coach got all over him at practice, maybe went a little too far, embarrassed him, humiliated him, whatever. It happens. I've seen it happen. Trust me. Take a day, they're mad as hell. Two days, mad as hell. Kill the coach if they could. Eventually, calmer heads, right? Yeah. Don't make decisions when you're angry. You heard that one? (laughs) Well, now they can. Now they can. And they're young, and it's easy, 
and they just, I'm in the portal. Yeah. And it happens. And so you're running one of these programs now, and it really affects the way that you coach, the way that you let your coaches coach, um, the importance of the strength and conditioning people, the importance of your counseling people, the importance of everything. It's, it is kind it's when, when coaches say there's never a break, and everybody goes, boo hoo. It's like, no, that's not what they're saying. It's not, they're not bitching about the work. Their point is, is that they're babysitting all day, every day. Because they have players on their roster that they don't want to lose, but they want to coach. They have players on their roster that they want to develop, but to develop them, sometimes you've got to be a little hard ass. I'm, I love like I'll use Carson. I love Carson. I love Carson more than anything in the whole wide world. But there have been a few times that I've had to get on his ass. You know what I mean? Yep. Not he, many because he he's a go gr- nowhere. <laughs> not many. He's a great kid. Yeah, I'm sure that he is a good kid. I'm sure that if he had had the transfer portal option a couple of times, he might have hit it. <laughs> Would he come to my house? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you understand my point. I do. Sometimes I do. Gr- growth comes through a little adversity. Yes. Growth comes from discomfort. Well, if you can't create any discomfort in your program, it might not grow. And that's that's all he's saying. So when you have a coach like, and I thought Lane gave a great quote on this yesterday. He said, look, no program has benefited more than Ole Miss has from the portal. But he says this it was a disaster. And now with the unlimited transfer, it's even more of a disaster. Yeah, I'm glad he's talking too. I mean, it's gonna take people like him just he's got he he's one of the very few that are say it. Um, so I don't mind telling this because he told me if it ever comes up, say this part, and you just kind of brought it up because people talk about it. I we were doing a Zoom uh with a I guess they are a new Big Ten team um staff. That would have been Monday or Tuesday, I think Tuesday. And we were talking about everything, and, and he said, if it ever comes up, make sure the people on their podcast know this. We don't mind. We'll work our ass off. This isn't about a work thing. It's about you're having to change. You don't believe in what you are having. Like, we're now, like, as a coach, you believe in how you coach. You believe in how you hold people accountable. You believe in your system, right? Well, all of a sudden, now we're having to do things that we don't believe in, that we know are not good for the beneficial of the human being, we're having to do that all the time and smile and act like it's a good idea when we, in our core, we don't believe it's the right thing for the kids. He goes, that's, he said, fucking problem. And he's right. And as you're, you're spending 12 months on your own team and you're having like, Hey buddy, come over here. I know, Hey, I know you miss class. It's no big deal, but Hey, look, can next time, can you please go to class for me, please? It would make my life a lot easier instead of getting in their ass yeah. and making them go to class and, and treat them like a grown man. Or finding or finding someone to just go to the class for them, to take the test for them, all that kind of stuff. That's where it's going. It's so it's diff- shit, so it's difficult at the end of all that to go, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a disciplinarian. We're gonna have we're gonna have discipline in the program and you know. It and everything's fine as long as you win. But when the winning stops, or if the winning stops, it's things get a little difficult. All right, I was going to do NCAA bubble talk. We're going to skip that because that was going to take up a chunk of our time. Okay. I'm going to hit a couple of things. Then I want to talk about some profiles and some life advice. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I got the bubble talk if we ever, if we need it to end. I okay. think we're going to be good. I don't want to go too far over because if I do bubble talk and that, we'll be here all day. All right. Uh, real quick, Neil. Criteria Club. Yes. You've had a hell of a run. Let me tell you something about old criteria. You had a good day yesterday, right? Real good. Neil, I've had a good five out of six days. Yeah. Three in a row for your boy. Um, Let me tell you how good it's been. In the last 34 games that I've picked, I've picked 32 of the 34 winners in 34 games. Yeah. That's pretty solid, Neil. You've been been challenged by some people. I've seen seen some people challenge you. Yeah, and you know what? They challenge you, and they don't even know the rules of Criteria Club. it's called Criteria Club because for the game to qualify, it must meet certain criteria. (laughs) Imagine that shit, Neil. (laughs) Imagine that. If it doesn't meet the criteria, it's not part of Criteria Club. Do you know what rule number four of Criteria Club is? Know the criteria. Know the fucking criteria and stop asking every damn day. Post the shit every day. Every day. Since fucking December, I post this shit. Oh. It never fails. There's some asshole coming there like, hey, can somebody run down the criteria again? No, uh-uh, no. Go back. Go back. Look at another video. It, it'll be back there somewhere. I'm done posting the fucking criteria. So don't ask. 
Don't ask. Tyler's mom, I'm sorry this has happened. That was my that was my best Nick Saban. So don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, criteria Club is uh, on fire. So I'm going to give the f- official Criteria Club pick for today for our people that listen to us on YouTube. Okay. Um, it is. We're going Wazoo tonight. Wazoo Washington State. State. At home against Washington. I, I really like this Washington State team, by the way. I think they can make some noise in the NCAA tournament. Okay. They're fun to watch. Uh, we're taking Stephen F. Austin. All right. Stephen F. is more about who they're playing. The Jacks. Yep, the Jacks. Uh, they've lost. They've played some tough conference games down the stretch and not doing too well. But they're they're playing a team that's lost seven in a row. So we're going with I think it's Southern Utah. So I had it in my video. I get confused. Uh, but we're taking SFA. We're taking UT Arlington. UT Arlington has won five in a row, Neil. Um, and they're playing a team that's one and six in their last seven. Okay. Uh, give me UT Arlington and then Tarleton State. Hey, Tarleton State, Neil. Won 10 in a row, How boss. About that? Won 10 in a row. They're at home. Tough game tonight against Utah Valley. But, hey. Oh, yeah. They won 10 in a row. It's senior night. We're not, yeah. going, we're not going out losers after winning 10 in a row. It gets you plus 241. Okay. So, that's the official Criteria Club pet play for today. How and, excited were you to wake, wake up this morning and see Hawaii? All right. So, and that's the other thing, man. It's like, guys, y'all make this, like, make this shit too hard. <laughs> like, I was trying to explain to people the math of it yesterday. Yeah. I might as well have been going, womp, womp, womp. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> like you're adding a fifth team on purpose yeah. late in the day yeah. that boosts your odds by a shit ton. Okay. Okay. Instead of a four teamer, you're having a five teamer. Right. So if your initial parlay that you were going to hit hits, <laughs> just hedge the wager and you got a free bet. No, they're like, how do we, we sit? now why would they add Hawaii? I mean, that makes no sense. <laughs> and people, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. They were literally by the math. By the straight math, if you hedge your bet, mm-hmm. it was you have a plus twenty advantage. They're literally giving you twenty bucks to play the game. Like here, mathematically, the analytics were off. So it was a, it was a, you know, whatever. <laughs> I just it bothers the shit out of me if you can't tell. All right, oh, I can tell. All right, um, uh, TJ with uh, super chat. Thank you, TJ. He says, "Hey, I've been wanting to try podcasting. Do you guys have any advice on how to get started, what to do, and what not to do?" <laughs> TJ, my man. <laughs> See what happened was. Um <laughs> uh, it's hard, man. It's hard. Um you need to do number one, you, you, you I know people say you don't need good equipment. You you do need good equipment. You need um, a good mic, good computer that has a processor, good processing speed. Especially then, if you're streaming. And then you you, you gotta either find your niche or be really good at being conversational and then i don't in terms of growing an audience and stuff man i can't even i can't even imagine now i mean we we started mpw we started the oxford exxon podcast it's been more than 11 years and so i mean we were podcasting before everyone was podcasting so we were kind of out in front of it and we i guess built an audience i i would i would think it would be difficult to build an audience now, but that doesn't mean you can't. And here's the the big thing. This is the big one. Don't be afraid to try stuff. Don't be afraid to fail, especially when your audience is super little. That now's the time. It's like that's why I never understand. If nobody's it. gonna go back and listen anyway. Ask me how I know. You see the Criteria Club? They're making. They don't go back. And well, it's why I always laugh at like seventh grade girls basketball coaches <laughs> when they're playing every game to win. There's no championship. <laughs> it should be all about development. They, you can't win the seventh grade girls state championship because there's not one. <laughs> so play your players. You play never, them. you never know who might develop. Do they wear full uniform at seventh grade? No. Okay. But I, this happened with my daughter, and I, I was like, I don't <laughs> get it. Why do you have those five or six kids at the end of the bench that don't play? You know what they're going to do. They're going to quit. So why would you, as and if I were the high school coaches, I'd go down to the middle school and be like, <laughs> play them. Because one, you have, especially your boys, right? Yeah. How many times does a boy have like a six-inch growth spurt Yeah. in the eighth, ninth grade? Don't, don't, no, don't alienate them in the seventh grade. And you'll kill them, you'll, you'll make, you'll now, don't get me wrong, kill not, their love for their sport. Too. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you take everybody who tries out. If they try out for your team, if you and put you, them on the team. You play put them. them on the team at that level. You should yeah. play them. No, I agree. anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. So my, my, my deal is, is TJ try new things. Oh, podcast. Try try different things. Don't be afraid to fail. 
uh, my all kidding aside, my advice would be stay patient. It's very difficult. A lot of people quit. Yeah, and you've got to. Because gotta, it's, it's a slow grow. You have to be very consistent. Consistent and be patient. It's a slow, slow grow. Um, stay the course. It'll eventually get there. And uh, podcast about something that you really enjoy. Because if you don't, it'd be, it'd it be gets hard. hard. It yeah. gets hard. Because even when you do stuff that you enjoy, you have days that it's drudgery. Yeah, like you're talking about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, last thing, and then we're going to get into some stuff. Um, UFC 299, I know you're excited this weekend. But for all my UFC fans out there, this is one of the best cards in a long a long time. Our good friend Cole is going. It's in Miami. Um, so he'll be there. But uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley um, and Cheeto Vera rematch. It's his only loss. He broke his leg when he uh, fought him. And since he's gone on to win ever since, and he's got the title. Uh, you got Dustin Poirier's fighting. Kevin Holland's on the page. Gilbert Burns, Peter Yan. We got we got some good stuff there. Um, I did skip over this. I want to tell this real quick. Did you see uh, our friends in the Alabama media? All of our and there are friends. How they were just like kids at the a candy store at practice yesterday because they, they allowed practice. they open practice. Yeah, they haven't seen it in like seventeen years. And yeah. they were like, oh my gosh. And then I text Kane this morning. Um, Kane had a like. He let the coordinators talk at the end of practice. And so, I mean, it, there were so many reporters there for Kane's, like, after practice deal. And he was like, he was trying to figure it out. I said, yeah, just as many as there was for a Tuesday at South. Uh, yeah, but there's so much media coverage on that program. It's there's, a different deal. It's so different. Like, there's levels to it. I know that. Um, I knew the media was different there. Like, my, I don't know, it couldn't have been there two weeks. We would have, this was kind of the transition when we were doing the mailers and the graphics would come out. Well, we had this really good graphics guy, and he did something about the something about like a graphic with checks, and I like posted on my social media, just like any other graphic I would ever post. And dude, I go home and my family wasn't. I remember my family wasn't there yet, so I was staying in the hotel, and we work. And I go home, and I, I remember getting home late because the uh, ten o'clock news was on, and it was on ABC thirty three forty. I had turned it on. Yep. And there was a picture of my tweet, and it done made the sports the uh, sports. I was like, uh, "Are you are you shitting me right now?" Slow, <laughs> slow sports day. I mean, if you anything you tweeted was was bound, anybody yeah. on staff was probably going up on the news somewhere. So there's there's different levels, and then the the, the fans are different there. Um, they <laughs> they get you don't say. Yeah, they're they're different. Um, really? Yeah, they're different. Um, huh. We had a. Uh, I'll tell this story. I haven't told this one. I don't think ever. I, think, I don't know if I even told you this one. So my first spring there, we're getting ready for uh, eight-day games the next day. And we had some kids in town or something. I don't remember, but for some reason, Nick was still in the office. And it was like me, Nick, and then uh, Sad Burns, the guy that uh, takes care of him, his personal assistant. We were the only three left in the building. And I don't remember why, but everybody else had gone home. And it's not late. It's 738. It just got dark outside. And I think there was like a baseball game the same that afternoon or something that, and you know, the Malmore athletic facility and the baseball, yep. they share the same parking lot. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed my keys. We we're kind of walking out together, but Nick was probably about, I don't know. We were walking down the hall together. Then I split and went to my office, closed up, got my keys. And so Nick's probably, I don't know, 45 feet in front of me walking out the door. And you you would back then they've probably redesigned it by now, but you would go through this like uh, cafeteria area where we ate, and then there was a back stairwell to the coach's parking lot. And so when you go down the back stairwell, me and Sed were walking together talking, and so Nick's going down by himself, you know, going to his car, and it's glassed in. The staircase is glassed in, and we hit the stop top of the sca uh, staircase, and we're looking out in the parking lot, and we see a fan, a singular fan, <laughs> in a dead sprint. To, towards Nick and Nick's the only one in the parking lot. Well, that's not good. And I'm thinking, you know, in your mind, you're like, Oh shit. Like this is, this is, yeah, this is a crazy <laughs> We're running. And, the so, gumps. Right, and dude, we both start taking off, dude. I've bust my ass going down the stairs. I'm trying to go, I'm in like dress shoes and we go out there and this dude basically, you know, like Nick had opened his car door. Yeah. He was standing between like Nick was up against his car That's and nice. the guy was standing right here and he was being nice. He's like, coast, 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 coast. Can I get a picture? Can I get a picture? Can I get a picture? We're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like dude was on like, he was out there, man. I don't even know if he was on anything. He was rolling with the tide. He was, 
rolling with yeah. something. Yeah. But I'm talking about it was it's like, hey, so they get a little they get a little antsy. It was uh that was funny. All right, Neil. Um before we came on today, you informed me. <laughs> I did. Um, I did. You informed me. This is the part where uh the show goes off the rails. Uh you you informed me of some some breaking news. You wanna you wanna share with the fans? Yeah. So well, I don't know if it's breaking news. It's pretty fascinating. This is uh Patrick Webb. He tweeted this uh from uh, at leading report he works for a publication called the leading report.com he's followed by almost seventy three thousand people so i'm gonna guess that he's not a loon um he's been covering lots of different things it says breaking the federal government has been illegally surveilling and building profiles for americans in secret portal in a secret portal called dsac for those who oppose firearm restrictions, lockdown, and ma vaccine mandates, and or support border security, and are labeling them as domestic extremists. Domestic Security <laughs> Alliance Council, DSAC, along with FBI and DHS bases, uh, they built profiles entirely off political beliefs, working with 650 companies to gather data on Americans using merchant category codes to flag people who shop at Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, and or purchased religious text. The FBI DHS has been requesting personal financial information from banks without warrants to create these profiles and keep tabs on Americans who dissent from the government. I mean, it? do we even need to dive into how bad that is? Is that it? This can't be real, you, though, man. It can't be. I mean, <laughs> oh, it can be. <laughs> I mean, I pray that it's not. So basically, we got secret profiles on every single, uh, every single human being that's located, whether you're Democrat or Republican. I mean, we're talking half the country. That that's. Uh, we, we've we've got it. I mean, politically, man. All jokes aside, shops at Bass Pro Shops. I mean, all. all <laughs> Well, if, if you shop at Bass Pro Shop, and you, I don't, I, I don't go to Bass Pro Shop. You've I'm, never been. I, I've been. That's but, a great place. But I'm not a hunter. I'm not a fisherman, etc. So I don't. I've never been to Cabela's, for example. <laughs> but I don't. Same kind of thing. I don't drive past the Cabela's or a Bass Pro Shop and go, man. Everybody in there's a damn domestic. <laughs> what, what was the word? Hold on. Hey, it wasn't terrorist. Hey, it was I, a who? domestic. Uh, what was the word? I want to find it. extremist. Hey, what? Uh, who who wrote? Who's doing the filing? By the way, who's who's doing this? It's the federal government. No, but like you mentioned, an agency or something. That they yeah, it's the DSAC, Domestic Security Alliance Council. DSAC. So along I, with the FBI and the DHS. FBI and DHS. Yeah, Department of Homeland wow, Security. Wow, I know that one. Hey, uh, if the DSAC is listening, and y'all, when you're when you're going to my profile, just make sure you add. You may already have this. Um, I bought both. I bought two handguns at Bass Pro Shops, just for the record. <laughs> so, um, if I bought two handguns, you're an at Bass Pro Shops. Yeah. So I'm. I mean, I'm think all, about think about what I mean. Hey, can I use my binocular picture for my profile picture? You could. <laughs> think about hey, what it's all over. It's all over social media. Think about what they think of me with all the lockdown stuff. <laughs> Whew. I mean, I wonder where we're ranking. I know, the list. I, I knew Oxford <laughs> Middle School and Oxford High School hated my guts on the on the lockdown and the mass mandates, but now now I know that it goes much deeper than that. Uh, what, hey, maybe we should just call us and we could give them a little better background for the profile. I really don't. I know this sounds crazy. I know people that probably would piss a lot of people off. I could give two shits. <laughs> I mean, what are they? I, I literally talk on a podcast for what three hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got hella hours of TikTok. I'm not hard to find out about. Hey, come come holler at your boy if y'all need need some more information. Um that, that stuff doesn't Should we should me. we should you add that to your I guess I should add this to my Twitter profile. Domestic extremist. Oh, don't do that. They'll you'll get banned. There's no way this show's not getting flagged, by the way. <laughs> hey, y'all enjoy this show. Hey, is it's probably a good time for all you people listening and getting ready to hit the X button on our on the show. To remind you that we're, bought, we're brought to you by the Biden administration. <laughs> Stay tuned for the State, the State of the Union, Union tonight. Um, no, I just that that that's that's dangerous, man. That's that's that is not a good that's not a good place to go. That's not a good place to go as a country. We, that's why I say we there's cannot, no way that that's accurate. Oh, it's probably very accurate. 
It's probably very accurate. So pretty much seriously though. Yeah. It's probably it's literally so every single person that's registered as a Republican voter would fall, fall in that. Did you pay attention in 2020? <laughs> Apparently not. Did, I mean, did you watch what happened? <laughs> I mean, and you think the transfer portal's messed up. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, oh, yeah. I always love that when people go, college football's wrecked. I'm like, well, I mean, compared to like the country, it's like in great shape. Uh, <laughs> hey, but you know what's not messed up? The Criteria Club is on fire, Neil. All right. Time for some life advice. Oh, I'm going to take a deep breath on this one. Life advice presented by Cole Walters of State Farm Insurance. Cole Walters is licensed in auto, home. Just wait. There's more. Life, health, business, and pet insurance for the whole state of Georgia. Contact Cole at 706-525-7850. You can also find him at colewalters.com insurance.com all right <laughs> life advice all right i'm gonna get serious so one of my good friends came over this has been submitted to us so one of my good friends came over the other day let's call him kyle what's up kyle he's been married for six years together with this um gotta jot some notes now with this young woman for 10 has a two-year-old he and his wife used to be really big party people and borderline alcoholics. Well, roughly two and a half years ago, while she was pregnant with their kid, they got invited to church and completely changed their lives. Neither has drank since, and they are honestly now two of the better people I know. Just because you drink a little doesn't make you a bad person, by the way. Just want to say that kind of feeling. Yeah, I felt like I was I like felt, I was being put on a list. I felt like I was being targeted. A <laughs> I feel like bit they right put there. that on our profile. You think that's on our profile? Probably. It is now. <laughs> There's you some more information. <laughs> um, well, he, he came over the other day. Kyle did, and not, and along with another friend of ours, we were sitting around the fire drinking. Kyle wasn't drinking, obviously, but Kyle confided in us that three years ago, right before his wife got pregnant, he had cheated on her. He still feels horrible about it. Not only did he cheat, but he cheated for roughly a year, emotionally and physically. He ended it around the time of the pregnancy, before the kid was born. He has been really been wanting to tell his wife. I'm assuming because of the church changing his life aspect, but I don't know. The only problem is his wife is a great, friendly person, but she has stated multiple times while we were all hanging out that if anyone ever cheated on her, she would not stay with them. No chance, 0%. It would be over, no questions asked. My life advice question to you. Do you feel like he should tell his wife and risk ruining his family and getting divorced? Or do you feel like he should bury this right now, keep it to himself, and never speak of this again? There's absolutely 0% chance that they would ever hear about this on your pod, by the way, so speak freely. What should I tell him, and what would you tell him? You want to go first or you want me to go first? I mean, I'll, my, my advice is very simple. You have to do a best case, worst case situation. So you have a best case, worst case if you tell her, best case, worst case if you don't. Best case, worst case if you tell her, there's no good outcome here. You're, Except you feeling better. Emotionally, maybe you get to alleviate some guilt. Yep. You don't tell her. I mean, if you've turned your life around and all of this stuff, and she never knows, that's you're not hurting anybody. And if you're really that racked by guilt and stuff, go see a therapist. Quit talking to people and go see a therapist. That's a great point because if he is already talking, if you're confiding that kind of stuff into friends, I guess, then you need to see a therapist because he can't tell it. He can't. He feels like he can't tell his wife. Yeah. Um, he, here's, here's my on that, that would be my part two of my advice would be go see a therapist. But my first part of my advice would be like, you have to understand. Okay. Once you tell her that, all right, she's already told you it's over. So if the guilt is that way, and if you're, if you're, if you want to feel less guilty, but not have a family, go ahead, tell her. Cause that's probably what's going to happen. That's just the honest truth. Now you're going to go. Uh, get a therapist. I, I would highly recommend that somebody that's a professional to guide you through that. Cause this is some heavy shit. 
Um, my first, my first advice would be to tell him, don't tell anybody, don't be telling people that. Yes. Because I mean, again, this is a podcast. And because now you're that, creating, but you're, now, you're creating the worst case scenario, which is you don't tell her and she finds out. Well, you're making, he shouldn't be telling anybody because now he's making his burden, his friend's burden. Yes. Cause now his friends, which he, the friend who, who now they got Texas, a, he feels, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Now your burden becomes his problem. 100%. And especially if like, they're, you're friends with a guy's wife. That gets weird, man. Because, I mean. You need to go talk to a professional. You need to go talk to a professional, get some help, and but know that, I mean, you're probably, if I, I imagine the professional will tell, I don't know what therapist wouldn't tell them to be open and honest and all that stuff, but the, your friend's probably going to pay the consequence of his actions, which is he will probably, at some point in time, if he already feels so guilty two years later uh, of telling her, um, it's just a matter of time till she finds out anyway, because now you're telling other people. Well, that's a, that's a, you know, tell a phone, tell a friend, tell a woman. I mean, it's, it's, they know it's gone. So, um, yeah, that would be my, my advice to get a therapist and understand that the consequences of his actions will probably come to roost one way or the other. That's freaking heavy, man. That was heavy. We can't be in on a heavy freaking deal, man. Why is it so heavy? Life gets heavy sometimes, man. Dang, deep. That's one of the reasons I don't like dark TV shows and stuff. No, I'm, I'm totally serious. Because sometimes life's just heavy enough. Yeah, I can I can get away with watching TV because I think it's fake. TV shows. Now you won't get some crazy shit like Dateline gets a little crazy. Yeah. You watch Dateline? No. Yeah, I like it. Not anymore. I like it. I don't, I don't, the stuff with like uh, the murder mysteries and stuff. I'm, oh yeah. I'm all over I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm no interest. I'm all over that. I did listen to uh, the podcast. I just finished it. Uh, the Raven it was about Ray Lewis and the, the Super Bowl murders. Yeah. The fight at Buckhead. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. It's really, pretty, really well done. Oh, so the wife, uh, have you seen this P Diddy stuff that came out yesterday? I did not. Ooh. Hey, fam. Y'all want to, y'all want to P Diddy's in, in, in some shit. <laughs> It's, it's, I'm not even going. Not even going to bring it up on podcast. Just hey, everybody, go out there and hit your social di social media and hit the old search button and type in P Diddy. You're welcome. He's in some shit, Neil. That's what it made me I'm, think of. It. I'm doing a quick search to see what what happened. Oh, all, all kinds of stuff. Oh, he's <laughs> he's addressed the allegations. Oh, okay. Lots of allegations. <laughs> Leaked audio of P Diddy and Meek Mill. Oh yeah, it was like hundreds of hours. Oh, and video. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't me, boss. That was not me. Hello, it looks like me, but that's not me. Um, yeah, can't do that. Somebody said they had a golf question for me. Did they ever put it in there? No, they did not. Did not. Um, the Bay Hill Arnold Palmer is this weekend. It's actually an elevated event. Okay. Um, dude, it's hard to watch, man. I mean, I, it's an elevated event. I'm still having. I, I watched a little bit, but I, I, my interest is completely gone from golf i don't know what i mean i don't know it's over i know you watched all of it today i did oh this question was if tiger woods career is a round of golf what hole is he on 19th hole yeah i mean he's at the end i mean he's he's on the fairway of 18 hell he may be on the he may be in the greenside bunker of 18 i think i think tiger is a competitive person i will tell you this i bet you um with the rules, I bet you he'll he'll go banging around a little bit in the senior PGA Tour to stay sharp. He'll play a couple majors yeah. here and there. Yeah, have some fun. I mean, he's in great shape. He's got he's, nothing to lose. He's in great shape minus the actual injury part, but physically he is in. I mean, you can't tell that he's he's forty eight or whatever what he is. But no, his his legacy is set. He's he's established. Yeah. All right, we will uh, we will wrap it there. We will be back on uh, Monday with one episode next week. We'll just do a Monday show, and then um, we've got spring break and i've got sec tournament and stuff like that so we got stuff going on to cover and work and play and you're going on basically watch some play yeah they play in biloxi i think it's wednesday thursday oh cool so the wife has talked me into yeah that was a fun discussion. I, think, I think carson's team in the when they get started again for his senior year i think they play in uh they play in florida early in the season i'm gonna go yeah, no, it's uh that that's my one my one resolution, good lord willing. 
I will go to every soccer game home and away next season. No matter what, I'm going to be there. I'm not missing one. If it interferes with the football game, whatever. You should. I'm, I'm going to go. That's my own life advice to me because I know for an absolute fact this time next year when it's over, I'm going to become sad about it. Yeah, you should. You know what I mean? No, you should. No question about it. I've told you, I, you know, my mother never missed a – she missed one sporting event of all the sports I played. She missed one game in my entire – of all sports. She missed one game no matter where it was. Um, and it was because she was in the hospital having surgery when I was a – I think I was a sophomore or junior in high school for a Friday night uh, – high school football game she missed. But um, – Anyway, I mean, it, it means it means a lot to, uh, oh, to yeah. your kids too. Sure, you know? and they don't know it. Like I, I didn't really think about it then, as much as I do now. Yeah. How, how awesome it, it was. means more to you now. Yeah, and of then course, my mom and dad come. You know, when I coached, dude, they came to. I mean, they didn't miss many games me coaching, no matter where it was. Either. Yeah, I mean, they they would use it as travel, um, and so they obviously if it was a home game, they came here to see the kids. But um, if it was an away game, they they tried to go to just about all of them. They didn't miss many at all. We've been brought to you by Rain Total Body Fuel, 300 milligrams natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits and achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram, Rain Body Fuel. To learn more, for Tyler Siski, I'm Neil McCready. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe out there, and I will talk to you again on Monday. Bye.